Public service announcement. We're going to talk about the fundamental principle of fat loss. All right, so why this video is because as someone who used to struggle with losing fat, and I gotta tell you, I study biochemistry. I should know how the body loses fat and expends energy, but it took me years for it to all click together, and when it did, it's incredibly simple. But for the average person, there's so much misinformation, predatory behavior, people trying to sell crappy supplements and fitness plans that are miracle, fat'll just melt off your body, that it's, it's so confusing. When your whole goal is just to lose fat, we have to understand that equation. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And by the time you're done with this video, it's gonna be incredibly simple. And then you can go off in whatever sustainable diet direction you want to. All right, so keep in mind, the only thing we're talking about here is the baseline understanding of how all, and I'm saying, I'm serious, all weight loss diets work. We're not talking about any other end goals like muscle building or if you have any sort of micronutrient deficiency. What we're talking about is that you want to understand how we lose fat on the body. And there's only one way to do it, and it's exactly that equation. But because there's two parts of the equation, there are different elements of each. So in this video, we're gonna talk about first the calories in portion, and then we're gonna talk about the calories out portion and how all of this works together to get that fat off your body. Done with breakfast. So what was the point of that little montage? Well, I just wanted to illustrate something like you saw with the eggs. It was on a scale. Everything I eat is measured. Is it completely precise? Like, I can't believe it's not butter spray. It says zero calories. If, if you spray enough, calories will add up, but it's so negligible that it's not something I pay attention to. I just know that for me, if I stay under 2,500 calories a day, based on my current routine, I'm going to be in a sufficient deficit to cut weight like I have. Like I've lost 22 pounds in the past three months just being in a deficit and using exactly what I'm gonna share in this video. No magic, just pure science and just a baseline understanding. So let's start off by understanding what is a calorie. A calorie is just a simple unit of measurement. It's like a mile, it's like a foot, it's like a gallon. And I think because we associate calories with food, we get kind of confused and we make it out to be more than it is. It's just a unit of measurement. I feel like I gotta keep reiterating this point just to make sure we understand that it is a unit of measurement. It's the amount of energy required to heat one gram of water, one degree Celsius. But that's not what's on our packaging. On our food packaging, it's calories with a capital C, which is the amount of energy required to heat a thousand grams or one kilogram of water, one degree Celsius. So it's the amount of energy that we need from food and the amount of energy that we output when we're doing any sort of living or extra function like exercise. So that's what a calorie is. Again, it's a unit of measurement. But then you get to what the myth or the debate is, is a calorie a calorie? The answer is both yes and no. Yes in the fact that, what did we just learn? A calorie is a unit of measurement. The, the FDA does not discern, or whoever's packaging your food discern if a calorie is coming from spinach or a cookie. But no in the fact that whatever you're eating is probably gonna have a different composition of micronutrients within it. These two tiny cookies equate to 90 calories. But this entire package of baby spinach and spring mix is 90 calories. And within it, you're gonna get your vitamin A, your vitamin K, potassium, calcium, vitamin C, a whole bunch of other micronutrients that are not in these two tiny little cookies. But they're both 90 calories. All right, so we get it. 
A calorie is a calorie for the purposes of energy expenditure. So for the purposes of this video, again, for weight loss, fat loss, yes, a calorie is a calorie, and that's independent of any micronutrients within the food that we're eating. Now we've heard about micronutrients, let's talk about macronutrients. All right. So in the 19th century, this US chemist named Wilbur Atwater developed this system by analyzing the waste of human beings. Before, the United States was estimating calories based on a calorimeter. But what it didn't account for was the thermic effect of food, which is the amount of heat and energy released in our bodies because we need to break down that food. It takes energy to get energy. And what they found through all of the release of heat and the analysis of the waste was our macronutrients come down to three things, and that's how we get our food label today. So carbohydrates and proteins, one gram equals four calories, and fat, one gram, equals nine calories. Now there is what we know as the fourth macronutrient, which is alcohol, but as we talked about with the macronutrients and the composition of it, it's pretty useless energy. It's non-satiating and that one gram of alcohol equals seven calories. So you can see how a bunch of alcohol and that's not filling you up and tends to make you make poor decisions to eat adds up and we're in a caloric surplus. What we really need to focus on, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. All right, so a perfect metaphor for calories in would be like what I'm doing right now. I'm putting gas in my truck. It's the only way that my truck gets fuel. And as I add the fuel in, my truck gets heavier. And as I use the fuel and it dissipates, my truck gets lighter, just like our bodies. There's no other way except for calories in that is going to get you in a caloric surplus. So don't think that you're going through some sort of photosynthesis, just like a plant, and it's just coming out of nowhere. It's the food that you're sticking in your mouth. All right, some last things we need to know about the calories in before we move to the next portion. Number one, the calorie content that we see on food is prone to a certain amount of error by the FDA. It's not completely perfect. The science isn't completely perfect, but as long as you're tracking, everything should average out. And then the last thing I wanna make sure that we understand is that separate from the calorie content, the actual composition of the food, one thing like sodium or issues with breaking down things like metabolic conditions. Like I have a tough time breaking down carbs, so I have a very low carb diet. And if I eat more carbs or high sodium, I get a lot of water retention. And that again is separate from any fat loss off my body. That is just my body that if I have a high sodium or high carb diet, really being inflamed and retaining water. So that's the last two things I wanna say about that. Let's move on to calories out. All right, now we're at the money section. This is the calories out portion of the video, and this is where people are gonna be skeptical, try to debate different things, and this is where you've probably tried strenuous exercises, all these different kind of fitness programs, fat burning supplements. The science is solid when it comes to this, and let's get into it. So there's three different ways that our body burns fat. It is thermic effect of the food, which we kind of touched on, we'll touch on a little more, resting metabolic rate, and then physical activity, both what's called exercise activity thermogenesis and non-activity thermogenesis, or eat and neat. Let's start off with the thermic effect of food. Now, prior to the Atwater system where they were using calorimeters and they weren't accounting for this thermic effect of food, of how much energy is required to extract the energy out of the food we eat, that's where we kind of ran into issues. Nowadays with the Atwater system, we know that one gram of carbs or protein equals four calories and one gram of fat equals nine calories. So that's already accounted for in our food. But sometimes if you're eating a lot of protein, you get the meat sweats and you can feel yourself feeling like a furnace. That's where this comes from. Your body's utilizing energy to break down the food to extract the energy. Now, one thing that people wanna think about when they're thinking about the thermic effect of food is that if you see that it takes more energy to break down protein than it does carbs or fats, then hey, maybe I should just do a full protein diet. Well, that's actually not the case. There's been multiple studies to show that whatever composition of food that you take in doesn't really matter. Like for instance, one study looked at over 800 people, they separated them into high carb, high fat, high protein, and putting them in the same caloric deficit with the same energy expenditure, all of them lost the same amount of fat. So that's again, another evidence that our food and nutritional labels already account for this thermic effect of food, and also a calorie is a calorie, regardless if it comes from protein, carbs, or fats. 
The next resting metabolic rate. This is your body at rest. You're not going to do any exercise. You're doing nothing. You're probably just staying completely horizontal, binge watching Netflix all day, and this is where you're gonna get your resting metabolic rate and how many calories you need just to live and breathe and walk to the bathroom occasionally. Oftentimes, you probably heard, and I'm guilty of saying this, that hey, when I was your age, my metabolism was much faster. And actually, there's probably for other reasons that we'll talk about in a second, but the studies shown, in this study that was recently released, that that's probably not the case. Metabolism, when you're born, is way up, and then slowly comes down, but it's still up through adolescence. But then there's this plateau, apparently, between 20 and 60, that if all things are equal, and you haven't changed any sort of your daily habits between 20 years old and 60 years old, your metabolism should remain the same, which is pretty mind-blowing. So you can automatically remove that excuse out of your head. And that brings us to what is more likely the answer, the physical activity portion. People that go older in age tend to lose muscle mass, bone density, they're less active, and they just don't expend as much energy through exercise activity thermogenesis. Purposeful workouts, going for a run, doing a strenuous exercise, CrossFit, boxing, or even just walking 7,500 to 10,000 steps a day. That is enough for this exercise activity thermogenesis. So people that don't change any diet or in a combination of changing what's going into their body, the calories in while also adding exercise, that's why you lose weight. That's why people feel like they have to go do physical activity is because usually the two are paired when actually you could keep your same diet, wouldn't recommend it if it's a bad one, and also start doing your exercise and you'll still lose weight. Now the next one's a very interesting one when it comes to physical activity. It's called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It's the fidgeting, it's tapping your foot, bouncing your leg, tapping your finger, twirling a pen, doing anything outside of just normal rest that you just don't realize you're doing. If it's intentional, it's exercise. If it's non-intentional, it's neat. And this is where people kind of fall in the bucket of, oh, that person probably has a high metabolism. A lot of times that this is a very fidgety person. So they're constantly moving, they're adjusting, they're doing all sorts of things that it's outside the norm. Now there are some experts out there that say you can increase the non-purposeful activity in your body day to day, but for me it doesn't really make any sense because then if you're like purposefully improving your non-purposeful movement, then it becomes purposeful. So then it's exercise activity and it's not non-exercise activity. But anyway, my suggestion would just be instead, if you're going to drive to a mailbox that's down the street, you walk and you just start adding things that you just otherwise would normally not use exercise activity for. That's probably the best way. Now the second most important thing you have to understand is where a lot of people fail. And it's the psychological and mental aspect of making that lifestyle change. You can understand all you want that calories in must be less than calories out, but a lot of these studies show that people relapse a lot of times because they're choosing something that's not sustainable. I'll tell you personally, if I eat nothing but chicken and broccoli, I'm gonna go insane, I'd be 500 pounds. But no, I don't give up any of my favorite foods. I'm very diligent and disciplined about how often I eat them, but I think about my calories as this reserve of money. I don't spend what I don't have. So you don't have to do keto or vegan or intermittent fasting or pescatarian, any sort of diet and be forced into it unless a healthcare provider tells you you have to do something like low sodium or low cholesterol, completely different thing that I'm talking about. You can find a diet, even something personalized and customized to yourself that fits within exactly what you want. And one thing's for sure, I don't lose out on my cheat meals. This is all about having a sustainable lifestyle. Even on a day where I just want to do nothing but lay on the couch and watch football, I can eat an entire pizza with my only exercise being walking my dog. But as long as I'm in a deficit, I know that my body is expending the energy stored on my body. This is good. And that's another myth to break, that you have to do strenuous exercise. You can walk. Get your 7,500 steps. If you're a couch potato, just start slowly moving just a little bit and that'll put you in a deficit even if you stay with the same caloric intake that you had then you can move up to sort of different exercises. I mix things up all the time. Everything is sustainable, knowing the principles of calories in and calories out, and I adjust both sides of it to fit my desires, my wants, and don't limit anything in my life. 
And not only that, I'm gonna further this experiment in my next video, which I'm going to eat nothing but the top items from the most popular fast food restaurants for an entire week to show you that as long as I'm in a deficit, I'm going to continue cutting. So that's it for this video. I want everyone to succeed in whatever health journey that you're on while spending the least amount of money as possible. And I'm telling you, if there was genuinely some fat burning supplement out there that was just melting people's fat off their body, it would be flying off the shelves. So that's it for this video. Hit the like button if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, notification bell for when you know new videos are coming out. Let me know if I missed anything in the research. Hit me up in the description. Any other follow-up questions that you may or may not have, again, consult your physician first. And also remember there is a link in the description to all the citations and even if you want to go further in depth, I do have a paper on my website that you can go read.